to get into this uh, to this notion of bioelectricity, I just want to look at one simple uh, uh, example of of this kind of uh, this kind of navigational competency, which is the frog face. So these tadpoles, this is a this is a tadpole of Xenopus labus. They have to become this adult. In order to do that, they have to rearrange their face. Their eyes have to move, their jaws have to move, the nostrils, the whole face has to be rearranged. And it used to be thought that this was a hardwired process, that basically um, uh, every organ just moved the right distance in the right direction, and then you get your normal frog. We decided to test that process and ask how much intelligence there is. So you see, this is a, this is the, these are all experimental kinds of questions. You cannot just assume these things. So what we did was, uh, much like uh, James's definition, we, we, we changed the... Uh, that we, we, we changed the starting position. So we made a scrambled, we call these Picasso tadpoles. We scrambled the face. So the eyes off to the side of the head, the jaws are on top of the head. Everything is, everything is mixed up. And what we found is that these animals make largely quite normal frogs. All of this stuff moves in abnormal paths and abnormal configurations to get to the same uh, the same uh, final goal. In fact, sometimes they go too far and they actually have to double back. They have to come back a little bit. So you see this, this is this, this system. Uh, what evolution gives you uh, here is not uh, a set of movements for tissue. It gives you an error minimization scheme. It gives you the ability to minimize error from different starting positions to get to a particular state. So that raises a, a, a very obvious question. How does it know what the correct state is? And so what we've been doing is to this standard uh, picture of, uh, of of developmental biology, uh, where you have uh, some some gene regulatory networks, and then some 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 um, some physics happens with these proteins, and then there's emergence, this this magical process whereby you get this complex shape. Yeah, it's not all feed forward. There's this there's this amazing ability both at the level of physics and genetics to uh, return you to a correct state if you're deviated by injury, mutation, teratogens, whatever. And so. Um, if, if so, so this is this is a model of a kind of uh, anatomical homeostasis, and so in these kinds of models, uh, what's what's very key is that like with a thermostat in your house, any kind of homeostatic process has to have a set point. There has to be a uh, an explicit representation of what the goal is, so that you can calculate error. How far off are we at any given moment? So this is what this has been our research program for years now is to test this hypothesis by looking for that set point, learning to. Uh, re rewrite it, to, to read it and rewrite it. And the idea is that you don't have to make all your uh, interventions down here at the, at the genetic level. You can actually rewrite the set point and let the system do what it does best, which is to solve to that, uh, to that uh, set point. So, so what, what could possibly be a mechanism that stores a set point as complex as, a, as, a, as an anatomical descriptor, as a, as a layout? And uh, we looked at the brain uh, as, as a kind of uh, inspiration in the brain, the way, the way goals and navigation works in the brain is using this system. So you've got ion channels in, uh, in neurons. Uh, they let uh, ion, individual ions go in and out that creates a bioelectrical state, which may or may not be propagated through these electrical synapses known as gap junctions to their neighbors. And the ability to control how signaling flows through this network is a computational, a very basic computational medium that gives rise to this kind of software that here you can see the physiology of a, of a zebrafish brain as the zebrafish thinks about whatever it is that zebrafish think about. And uh, and it's the commitment of neuroscience that all of the memories, the, the preferences, the, uh, the goals, the competencies of, of, of these uh, creatures are encoded in that electrophysiology of the brain. And there's this notion of neural decoding. If we understood how to read it, we could read memories out of, out of the brain. Um, it turns out that this is an ancient, this, this kind of system is evolutionarily ancient. It goes back to uh, bacterial biofilms. Every cell in your body has ion channels. Most cells have these electrical connections. And we can do the same kind of decoding, this kind of non-neural decoding, by looking at electrical activity. This, uh, this happens to be an early frog embryo. Um, we're visualizing the electrical patterns. And again, try to decode where is it trying to get to an anatomical morphous space, whereas um, what you're seeing is, 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 a, is a clear isomorphism between neuroscience and developmental biology, where typically the electrical activity of this network tells your muscles what to do. It controls your muscles to move you through three-dimensional space. The rest of the body, would, long before that, uh, the rest of the body was using the exact same thing. Electrical networks using the same components to move the configuration of your body through morphous space. Same trick, different space. 